What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Northy33 and welcome to my healer build for ESO. Um, this was a video I planned to do at the beginning of this week and I haven't managed to get around to doing it. So today I'm managing to go straight into in-depth um, about my healer and what skills and abilities I use and what I personally think is best for me. Now this class is purely a healer so he's not going to do any DPS and he's not going to do any tanking obviously because it's just a pure healer build. Um, what I will tell you from straight from the bat though is when I play in groups for dungeons and stuff I use a restoration staff and a lightning destruction staff but when I do solo stuff and I want a little bit more damage I'll switch the lightning staff for dual wield um, but I'll get into that in a second and why I do so. So let's get straight on with this build. So the first thing you can see is the fact that in my chest, my waist and most of the rest of my armour is the uh, robes of the Withered Hand set. Now this increases your Magicka recovery, your maximum Magicka twice uh, and your health. Um, the reason why I use this as well is because for the 5 piece bonus of the Withered Hand set you uh, basically heal when an enemy within 28 meters of you dies and you regain health and magicka and as a healer you cannot have too much health or magicka coming in and it's an effect that can occur every three seconds so you can get a hell of a lot of uh, magicka and health recovery back from it um i do also use the defiler set now this is the set that i'll use um when i use my dual wield bar that i've already mentioned um because this increases my weapon damage my critical twice and then my fifth piece bonus does uh when you uh, deal critical damage you have an 8% chance to summon a hunger that spews poison to all enemies in front of you dealing 5,500 poison damage and stunning an enemy for 5 seconds every 5 seconds um, like I say I will change this set out when I use a, a lightning staff instead and I will actually end up using the worms of the remnant set um, and that can be found in vaults of madness and it's a very very good set to have if you want to use worm cult you can um, so there's about four or five different armies you could use, but this is personally what I do for my healer and uh, for the, the playstyle that I have. So sometimes he can be an off healer and have dual wield, but most of the time he is a pure healer. Um, so this is perfect for PvE and uh, trials pretty much. You can take it into PvP if you wanted to, but you probably wouldn't stand much of a chance. You'd have to change some of the armor sets out and some of the abilities, but I'll get into that in a second. Um... Like I say, the Robes of the Withered Hand set you can find in the Alakir Desert. Um, the Defiler set that I use you can only find in Vardenfell, which is in the Morrowind DLC. So if you don't have the Morrowind DLC, you probably won't stand much of a chance of getting this as a armor drop from enemies. But you probably could find it in some guild traders to buy. Um, and like I say, uh, the, the, Rain, the, Worm, the Worm's Raiment set is found in Vaults of Madness. Um, I do also use two piece of monster set and I do use Chokethorn and Chokethorn is basically a magical recovery and then when I use a heal ability you have a 15% chance to summon a strangler sapling that heals you or an ally for 20,900 health for 4 seconds every 10 seconds it can occur. Um, I will obviously use that purely for dungeons because as I'm going to be doing heals a lot of the time the, the choke thorn comes out extremely often. Um, moving on to abilities and this is where things will start getting interesting. So like I say, my main bar is purely for healing and this is the bar that I'll use a lot of the time. Um, so my main heal that I use a lot is uh, Breath of Life and this is just literally a tap of the button and it instantly casts health on every single ally. Um, the only thing I would say about using this one is wait until your allies go to at least a quarter health and then call the healing because it does more effective healing on people that have lower health if you call it on someone that's only got a fraction of health list missing it won't do much to them so the less health they have the better this works um, healing springs is a restoration staff ability and this is a circle that you can cool down and whoever's standing in that circle gets a heal and it, i think it lasts over six seconds and they get about five thousand health back for it uh, combat prayer is also a healing restoration staff ability and this is something where you slam the staff into the floor and a gold sort of like carpet will walk out in front of you and whoever walks into that carpet will get heals. If an enemy walks into it you'll start taking damage off them and you'll get uh, health back onto you which is very good to have as well. Um, repentance is only used when you are surrounded by dead bodies and this is something you tap and it make it basically makes a green beam come from the enemy's bodies into you and you uh, gain stamina magicka and a little bit of health and you can also get your allies with a bit of stamina as well which is very good uh, the last one i use for this bar is inner light but this isn't something i actually use actively this is something i have just a bit uh, uh, slotted into the um, ability bar uh, the reason for that is because whilst it's slotted i gain more uh, max, uh, maximum Magicka and I also gain Major Prophecy increasing my spill critical rating by 2191 um, and that obviously critical rating helps a lot for my uh, healing criticals so I can do loads more healing. 
My ultimate that I use is Remembrance, and this is a um, Restoring Light ability. Uh, this is the main heal, so if, if, if things are going really bad, this is the one I'll call in when I've got the ultimate available. So like I say, moving on to my second bar, and this is the one that I'll change between the Lightning Staff and the Dual Wield. So as you can see at the minute, I'm using Lightning Staff, and that's what I have on most of the time whilst I'm group uh, dungeoning and trials. So the first ability I have is in the Destruction Staff ability itself, and this is Blockade of Storms, and this is basically Elemental Wall uh, morphed into the Staff that I have. So if you have a Flame Staff, an Ice Staff, or a Lightning Staff, each um, effect is different for what staff you're using. And this is basically something I'd slam down. And in this case, a big lightning wall comes up and it stuns enemies and takes damage. Um, I also use energy orb, which is a big gold orb. I think it's necrotic orb it's morphed from. And if I call it out, allies can walk up to it and synergize and get instant heals of, I think, 5,500 health over two seconds. And I can call it as many of those as I want. Uh, Ritual of Retribution is a big area of effect uh, heal. And it's something I use all of the time. Um... Basically, any allies that stand inside it gain health and stamina, and any enemies that stand inside it take damage, and it's a very good thing to have out. Uh, Luminous Shards is my morph of um, Blessed Shards, or just, uh, I think it's Luminous Spear, I'm not too sure. Uh, but you throw it up in the air, and basically, you pull it near your tank, or anybody else that needs magic or stamina, or anything else, and they can synergize it, and they can get the magic and stamina back. Or you can just do uh, use it for area of effect damage, which you can just literally repeatedly put on top of enemies, which is very good. Uh, Power of the Light is my last ability, and this is a stamina ability, actually. It's a big gold beam that comes above an enemy's head, and it drains them of damage, increases the damage of the DPS and the tank whilst they're doing damage to the enemy whilst it's on them. And then in the final seconds, it would also do a magicka detonation, which will blow up and cause massive damage to the enemy. And 9 times out of 10, kill them outright. Uh, also, for the ultimate for this bar, I use Solar Prison. Um, and this is something I can call in and people can get the gravity crush synergy from this and it's a very effective thing to have for group uh, crowd control. Um, moving on with the abilities as well, I would also say make sure you have all of the passives available and unlocked for your character. So even if you only use one example like in this, Luminous Shards, I only have the one in Adric Spear but I do have all the passives unlocked so it's more effective so i would advise doing that for the restoration staff the lightning staff and every other passive that you use actively um moving out of the uh skills itself i'll then tell you about the food so the food that i use mainly is either jugged rabbit and preserves or i'll use uh long thin pasty with melon sauce and both of these do exactly the same and they increase your max magicka max health and max stamina for two hours and it's something that you really can rely on whilst you're doing big fights uh, I then also just use normal essence of health. So you can make your own potions if you really want to, and I have done before, but um, it's not a necessity because these things will keep you alive, and as a healer, you shouldn't really die anyway. Um, so moving on to the champion points. This is the most important part, I feel, for any build. Uh, so we go straight into the thief, and we'll go straight into the tower. As you can see in the first bar, I have absolutely nothing equipped. Uh, moving into the lover, this is when start, uh, things start getting more interesting. So I have 55 points in tenacity. 56 points in Arcanist and 32 points in Healthy. Now, Tenacity increases Magicka and Stamina uh, regen from any heavy or light attacks. Uh, so, I mean, the more points in that, the more you're going to gain back from using your less Lightning Staff or Destruction Staff in general, along with your Restoration Staff. You're not going to run out of Magicka in the slightest. And then Arcanist increases your Magicka recovery. Again, you can't have too much Magicka as a healer. Uh, healthy increases your Health recovery. So, obviously, the more of this you have the more health you can gain back after yourself without having to call heals on you. Uh, moving on to Shadow, I have just 11 points in Befal, and this increases the effectiveness of my healing reduction abilities. Um, so basically, if I can get a group area of effect on an enemy, and they're trying to get some heals, it won't work as well, and you can gain extra uh, health bonuses for casting heals on your allies. Uh, moving on to the mage and we have 51 points in blessed uh, in this increases my healing done so any heals that I call is increased by 11.4% I could put more points into that as well but obviously you don't really need to go massively crazy with that because you're going to have an effective healer I think from about 37 points onwards I've just gone 51 because you can never have too many uh, good heals coming out. Spell Erosion increased my spell penetration, and as most of my abilities are spell based, then my spell penetration is very much needed. That's why I have 42 points in it. Uh, Elemental Expert is increasing my Flame Frost or Shock Damage, and like I say, most of my Adric Spear abilities are magic based, and they do a hell of a lot of damage to the enemies. Um, Staff Expert, obviously, because I use staffs, 
then I need to have some damage coming from them as well. So that's why I have 14 points in that. And I have uh, 10 physical weapon expert for when I use my dual wield um, ability instead. So I can do some damage with that as well. Uh, moving into the ritual, we have 15 points in Thermitage, and this increases your damage done with damage over time effects. Uh, damage over time can count as Blessed Shards or the uh, Ritual of Retribution when you call it down. Any enemy that stands inside something that's area of effect will do more damage to it. Uh, piercing, I don't really have too much on this. This is mainly for the dual wield. Uh, and Mighty, again, it's for the dual wield, and it reduces my physical poison and disease damage, but you don't really need to put the 5 points into that. You can probably put it back into Piercing. Uh, moving on to the last bars of the warrior, so we have the steed, I have 18 points in ironclad and this reduces my damage taken um, from direct damage which is very much needed. Uh, spell shield increases spell resistance, obviously if you're going to be sat at the back somewhere and you've got a mage or an arch calling stuff onto you, uh, you need your spell resistance to stay quite high. Uh, resistance, critical resistance, so this will be people walking up to you with, star, uh, with uh, axes and stuff trying to hit basically beat you up you want to be a bit more resistant to that uh moving into the lady we have 38 points in light armor focus again i can't stress enough whatever armor ability you have so if you're using light medium or heavy make sure you have your armor focus up quite high for the armor set that you wear uh, and then lastly we have expert defender for 38 points and this reduces your damage taken from light and heavy attacks that pretty much is self-explanatory uh, bastion again i don't really have any damage shields unlike my tank class this is not a tank build this is a healer build so you don't need to have bastion points because it's very unlikely you have many shields or any shields at all um, if you did have a templar that had some shields then do feel free to put some bastion points in because it'll make the shield more effective but it's not a necessity for this case uh quick recovery is the last one i have and this increase, uh, increases my healing received so for instance if i'm calling heals out and it's not doing quite the job that i want it to and somebody else has a healing ability next nearby they'll also be able to get a effective heal whilst i'm joint healing with somebody else um but you can hold your own with this build and don't need to worry about too many heals because your magical bar can't run out uh, like i say if you want to pause the video at certain points points in this champion point tree then do go back and pause it to make sure you can sort of see what's going on and what points you can put where um, and do feel free to either copy or take ideas from this and adapt and if you want to improve this and do feel free to leave some comments below in the description box below and I'm um, feel free to like chat away and <laughs> tell me what I've gone wrong but like I say this is a very effective healer build and uh, you pretty much could swap most of this out if you kept all these champion points you probably could switch your healer for a DPS as well because um, you would have massive amounts of magicka and do a lot of damage um, but yes guys like I say that is it for this video so hopefully you did enjoy this and uh, if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe hit the like button below and turn the notification bell on so you can get future videos from me and uh, yeah I'll see you very soon so thanks for watching guys my name has been Northy33 I'll see you in the next video